we started our business with a very strategic yet simple plan. And it was a good plan. We decided. Welcome to the start of our week. It is bright and early Monday morning and we are ready to go. So my husband and I run two businesses together and they were actually started on accident and out of boredom when we were stationed in North Dakota with the Air Force. But after a few years of learning and pivoting and taking part-time jobs in the Air Force and moving to the other side of the country, our business actually started to grow at a really fast rate. And so now we're just trying to keep up with it and help it to continue to grow. And we've met a few people over the years that were going through a similar situation. They were working full-time jobs and wanted to learn how to start a business. And so now we basically just document our journey in the hopes that it'll help other people who want to start a business. So the most important part of that whole story I just told you is the fact that we had to pivot in our business multiple times. And we know that we're gonna have to continue to pivot, pivot as the economy changes. But pivoting isn't always fun. In fact, it's one of the scariest parts of running a business. For example, we started our business with a very strategic yet simple plan. And it was a good plan. We decided that we were gonna sell cutting boards to business owners here in Houston to use as client gifts. And that would be a means to market ourselves because after those clients got one of our cutting boards, we could then come back to them and say, hey, you like our cutting board in your kitchen? How would you like a brand new kitchen table? And that's it. Two products, no confusion, no unnecessary laundry list of product offerings on our website, just cutting boards and kitchen tables. That's it, done. So the only problem with this is that all of this planning was done back in early 2021 when this trend was absolutely dominating Pinterest. Yup, charcuterie was the thing. People were losing their minds over how to turn a piece of salami into a rose and who could make the prettiest charcuterie board and post it on Instagram. It was all over the place. So what were people asking our business for? You guessed it, charcuterie boards. After all of this planning on how to build and orient an entire business around two specific products, kitchen tables and cutting boards, our customers were asking instead for charcuterie boards.
We were in a hard spot because Davis, as the head of production, didn't want to add charcuterie boards to our list of products because he saw how much work it was gonna be to build, produce, scale, and systematize an entirely new product from scratch. But I, as the head of sales, did want to add charcuterie boards because I knew people would buy them and I knew that we would be able to snag clients that may otherwise not be interested in using us. Honestly, all I could see at the time was the money that we wouldn't be making if we didn't take advantage of this huge charcuterie trend. So what was the solution to this problem? We had two of us that didn't agree on what we wanted to do with this product and we didn't know if we wanted to add it at all. Well, because of the continuing demand, we decided to finally just sit down, do a little research and see what it would take to add charcuterie boards to our product line. Would we have to market differently? Would the profit margins even be doable? Was it worth spending the money on the lumber? Would we be able to find a design that everybody liked that we could repeat? We needed to find a way to streamline the process of making the boards with a lumber supply that we already had or was very easy to obtain. We needed consistent dimensions and a couple of super simple jigs to help us make the handles look uniform on every single board. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen our video about how we put together our handle jig, definitely go give it a watch. We also learned that we would need to reinvest in a drill press so that we could drill the holes in the tops of all the charcuterie board handles. Uh, this was a tool we had originally gotten rid of in our old garage shop because we thought to ourselves, we'll never need this tool again. So after a couple of days of thinking and mulling it all over, we realized that, okay, it really wouldn't be that difficult to order some four quarter lumber for the charcuterie boards in addition to the eight quarter lumber that we typically order for all of our cutting boards. Slow down. We also realized it was much easier to build that handle jig than we thought it was gonna be. And at the end of the day, we just needed to make a decision. We just needed to make a stinking decision. Were we gonna have all the answers? No. Did we know exactly how the boards were gonna work? No. But making a decision and choosing to run with an idea is better than sitting and stewing in your own indecision. So the last thing we did before we finally made up our minds was calculate profit margins. After crunching some numbers, we figured out that it would cost us about $56 to produce these boards, from manufacturing to labor to shipping. And then we figured out that we would end up profiting about $76 on each charcuterie board. And honestly, those profit margins were the deciding factor. We had officially decided to produce and scale charcuterie boards in addition to our two products we decided to begin with. So cutting boards, kitchen tables, and now charcuterie boards. Based on our research and the potential profitability, we decided to give the people what they had been asking for. And we are so thankful that we came to that decision. I mean, we have clients that use us solely for our charcuterie boards. And over the past year and a half, we've sold about 200 of these things. That comes out to about $28,000 in revenue from a product that we didn't even plan to provide when we first started this business. It was intimidating to pivot from our original business plan, but when profitability and growth are your goals, you have to produce what the market is asking for. You can't just build the things that you want to build and expect the market to want to buy them. And since these boards are really just a way to market ourselves to sell kitchen tables, it didn't really make sense that we were limiting our marketing potential. People were literally telling us what their clients wanted in their kitchens. And eventually we will do kitchen tables, but as of right now, we're gonna take this gift giving business as far as we possibly can, because there is so much money out there for corporate promotional gifts. And especially with a recession looming, businesses are gonna wanna keep their clients at all costs. Ooh, that's good.